it was one hand behind the back, you know, just right, you know, right, right. For they were black escorting. students, for, for black students, yeah. it was two hands. Um, sometimes, in my case, he had to clasp his hands around yeah. me. Um, and then in other instances, he had to step behind black students in order to to make that. So it's like the level of policing that took right. place between well, white and black is kind of, you know, that conversation of implicit bias. It happens all the time. It so looked like um, a WWE or something <laughs> like that. It really did at, at, at certain points of, of the video. Mm -hmm. You had something you want to go in? Yeah, what's what's that guy at um, Showtime at the Apollo? Who, oh, who the Sandman. Sandman. Yeah. Oh, wow. He was doing the Sandman. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he, was, he was sweeping y'all off stage. Right, yeah. that's what it seemed like, man. So I, I, let's go into a little deeper um, uh, campus atmosphere for uh, um, yourself. Right. Yeah, min minority students, yourself, period. Like, this, that's something that I, I, I mean, uh, Disciple Hill was a student back in the day, and um, but I, I don't know anything about that. And mm -hmm. I, I think we talked a little bit off air on the uh, deliberate disconnect and gap between the local community here mm -hmm. and the black kids on campus. I, I think that's something that always has been uh, existed here. So can you kind of describe what the atmosphere is like just for a minority student? Well, I mean, first I want to defer to, to Disciple. He yeah, cool. to yeah. So exactly. You can give a lot I wasn't exactly thinking of you when I, I wrote this I question. I you a textbook. Come right on in, big dog. He has lived experience on that. No, nah, so. you're right. You're right. You're right. I like that. Well, I, I was just like, you know, I was just like to interject that um, my time at UF, um, I enjoyed it, but there were lots of instances of inequality uh, between the blacks and the whites on campus. Right. Um, even dorm assignments, even um, everything. And I, I was um, fortunate enough to, to go there on scholarship, and, and I didn't have to put up with much of the stuff that my friends had to put up with. But a lot of them stayed in dorms that had no air conditioning. There was, I mean, it was, it was, it was horrible conditions for them. Period. And then some of the things that you had to endure as a student from your teachers, as well as from fellow students, were were definitely uh, racially biased situation, shall I say. Mm. Wow. Oh, well, that's what's up. <laughs> I mean... And uh, I mean, that seems to be the, the, oh, the theme yeah. still today, it right? It really hasn't changed. Oh, well, um... Moving on, I guess, well, I guess what I want to ask is another question about that vi uh, the, the video that we just played. Mm -hmm. And, um, you said that like, 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 like what we're touching on now, which is nothing is new, um, it's pretty much all the same. Um, let's talk a little bit about this Marshall. Uh, you know, let's move on to, to him a little bit. Okay. What What have they done with this guy? They They They. I, I know that they gave administrative leave. Mm -hmm. I know that they made a task force. But what would we like to see done with this guy? And, and what do you think the future is for him? I don't know what the future is for him. Uh... I don't. I don't know who he is. Right, right. They still haven't identified him. Huh? The, the university has chosen not to release his name, right. so they know who he is, um, or at least if you're saying in my in my eyes, my opinion, if you're saying we're choosing to not release his name or we're not going to release his name, as to me, it's, it's indicative that you have at least identified. Yeah, him exactly. Him. To say the least, um, because I mean, you have to be. There has to be um, a justification for that, mm -hmm. at least. Uh, an attempt on a justification for that. So what? Is, what is? What is the reason for you doing that? Then? What are you protecting, really? Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm not sure what his future is going to be. Uh, I I just want to see true accountability and paid administrative leave, isn't it? Um, there's got to be a conversation surrounding uh, implicit bias. I mean, in that case, uh, you can chalk it up to maybe just ignorance on the history of black free letter organizations. But even so, like there are non-black Greek students, non Greek students who were black, who, you know, might should try to do the shoot dance. Wow. And uh, she was forced to be removed from stage. So there's got to be a greater conversation about, like, your um, visceral responses to black people expressing themselves. Wow. So. Well, well, I guess so what I want to ask is um, this task force that they created, mm -hmm. that uh, the president, uh, Mr. Fo Fox, uh, said that they're going to examine uh, the ceremonies a little closer. I, I want to know your personal opinion on that. You think that's something that will be effective? Or you think that's a good start? Or? Uh, I mean, I ain't trying to get you. you uh, know. No, no. I just, I just feel like it's, it's like it's the same song. Right? It's, it's kind of the same song. It kind of lip service. We're gonna create a committee, uh, talk about <laughs> it, and then no real change comes about it. Right. And uh, I think the photo of me being forcibly removed from stage mm -hmm. and administration, administration on stage laughing. Right. I think is indicative 
of kind of just the greater culture at UF. Mm. And it's when students of color are struggling, what has the administration done to really support them? Yeah. Or when students of color have decided to use their voice um, in support of something, how has the university administration responded to that? So take, for example, last summer, uh, students were uh, advocating for two cultural houses, right. the construction of two cultural houses, mm -hmm. and uh, thank, thank God to the, to the support and the hard work of student protesters, they were able to keep those, um, to keep those institutions separate. So uh, black, black students would have their own cultural house, and Latinx students would have their own cultural house. Wow. Uh, but the university wanted to make it one cultural house, so mm -hmm. students had to get a petition going with over a thousand signatures, had to hold several teachings, several That's demonstrations, amazing. and it kind of culminated where they, um, they, I guess the word would be interrupted, a meeting, uh, and students sat in. Oh, meeting. I remember that. It was a public, it's a public yeah, meeting. Uh, so my it was like, friend Chad. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Shout uh, out to Chad. That's my boy, Chad, man. Chad, yeah. Well, Chad, been is, there? Chad is a real Chad. one. Yeah, Chad that's my dog one. right there, man. Um, so. He, 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 I remember um, he mentioned in this. Yeah, no, so uh, he was he was uh, one of those students that was involved in the planning of that. Um, and to, it was, it's just been like this kind of, but like there was, there was so much pushback on right. from the university. Right, right, um, right. And it's that, like every time students kind of, students of color in particular, mm. push for something that runs counter to the university's interests, there's so much pushback. And it's kind of, it's like a repeat narrative. So as far as the committee serving, it's like, I don't know if that's really what students right. would want. Uh, I, 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 I would I would assume the same thing. Yeah, I, I think students want institutional change, right. systemic change. Something that's like, like actual ta tangible. Right. right. So, um, I guess what I really wanted to ask uh, was just something you kind of already answered. Was I want you to kind of illustrate the distinction between the marshals' response to um, the black students opposed to uh, the other non-black Greek students, but I, like I said, you, that's something that you just kind of um, cleared so, up. I really, yeah. So, black students who, who aren't Greek? Who, right, right, right. Uh, well, they were still met very forcibly, so like Maisha, uh, like I said, she was doing the shoot dance. So it's like, for those of you, if you don't know what the shoot dance is, uh, you're doing, uh, you're like hopping on one leg and right. locking your arms. And, um, she was still forcibly removed from the stage. Sheesh. Um, and, 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 and just to, I was about to cut you off, but one thing that really was disturbing to me was I mean, not to say that it was any better with um, him, you know, forcibly removing you, but to watch him do it to a, a, a young lady that's half his size, right. it's almost like right. you want to beat up the bully, you know? It's like, come on, man, what are right. you doing here? You know what I mean? So, but, um, so shout out to, um, um, what did you say her name was? Yeah, Maisha was Maisha. Uh, the one who's in the shoot dance. The right. Delta, who was forcibly removed, her name's Nafisa. Nafisa, yeah, I actually uh, spoke to Miss Nafisa. Um, and, um, you know, we really want to wish all of them the best. And, and like I said at the beginning, um, to congratulations for, to all you guys and the accomplishments that you made, first mm -hmm. of all, because what's, what's really horrible about the situation is it takes away from that. You know what I mean? Like, right. come on, man, this is something that's life-changing here. Um, you had something you want to um, add in? Yeah, I just want to say that as a person that attended UF, I, I was kind of appalled when I saw the thing. You know, I thought that um, we shouldn't still have this type of thing going on in this day and age. But it seems like there's a reawakening of um, racial bias and, and um, hatred on blacks uh, since we had a new president elected. It seemed well, like it I, seemed like yeah. it's given. It seemed like it's it's more in your face now than right. it was before. Yeah, no and we more. have an instance after instance. Um, Starbucks, yeah. uh, Waffle House, mm -hmm. you name it. Even the young lady that was at college and fell asleep in the common room, oh, which I've yeah, done a yeah, million yeah. times. Okay, yeah, yeah, a yeah. million times. But yet, somebody calls the police on her yeah. because she's black. Right. So I think that the only way, and, I, and this is what I've been advocating on our show is that we got to vote with our dollars. Mm -hmm. If if black people didn't attend UF football games, UF basketball games, I mean, that's how you that's how you get. You get them with your dollars. Yeah. Not yeah. give hold back the money. And I think uh, you saw I mean in a in a very big instance of this at University of Missouri. Missouri yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say the same thing. Go right yeah, there. Yeah, no, when, uh, when the football team decided not to play. Right. And I'm sure there were repercussions for the football team. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, they were met. I'm sure. 
just just the way it's like the amount of money they're standing to lose in three hours. Well, the thing. Oh, 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 go ahead. I would no, because because the university the, the university president resigned shortly after that. Yeah. And, um, um, you just you Tim Walt Tim Tim something. <laughs> um, well, the thing was, they had a long history of racism on that campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, all kind of crazy stuff, man. Um, a lot like here. And the young kid, the activist, I forgot his name, the young young man, yeah. he he started a hunger strike he did. in order for this guy to resign. Because mm-hmm. the guy was upholding a lot of racism. The hunger strike gets no uh, media attention, very little. Um, and, you know, um, they were going to let the, the kid die. I'm just going to let him say it like that. They, they were going to let him die until the football team jumps on board. Football team jumps on board. Uh, say that we're not playing this weekend, and and this guy, uh, like you said, this guy, <laughs> this guy, um, resigns in less than twenty four hours. Wow. And and it, and it, 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 like you said, that's the perfect example because it shows the power of, like you say, the dollars. Now I do think that it will take more than, especially here, it will take more than just uh the black dollars because I, I mean that's that because that's a, a area that I, uh, I think that we're uh, underrepresented. You know, household white households. Having uh, thirteen, um, the income been thirteen times more than blacks. But I'm just saying, we, so we're definitely gonna need them to not buy tickets too. You know what I mean? You, um, you got a lot of black alumni too, though. You do have a lot of black alumni. Sorry, a lot of black alumni. Say that on the mic. Yeah. yeah, you do have a lot of black alumni too. Yeah. So if we got together as a group, absolutely, I'm sure that we can make a wave of change. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm just saying, I, I really think that you both are on to something. You know what I mean? Because. That's exactly what it, what what we really need. That that's the kind of real uh, effective change that that unfortunately they respect more, man. Um, uh, when I, when I say they, I mean um, hatred and evil. Um, my bad. But let, let I want to move back on to you know what we're discussing here, man. Um, and a question I did I had for you. Um, I asked Chad the same thing, but I, when he was here, is what would you like to see? the local community do to get behind the efforts here? Like, what is, the, is there something that we can all do? I mean, you, you shout out the hashtag earlier. Right. But, I mean, you know, other things, you know, day-to-day or whatever. Uh, well, first, uh, okay. So, I feel like you have students have to do right by Gainesville. Because right. uh, I'm only here, I, I was here to get a degree. Um, but people, there are people that have been living in Gainesville. I've met, I've been living here 30, 40 years, parents, grandparents that have lived in Gainesville. So, us as students have to be more involved in the community as well and not get buy into the concept of, you know, the ivory tower or I'm just here for a degree that, you know, there's a, a, a fairly substantial black community here with a lot of history behind it. Oh, yeah. So uh, I would challenge first U.S. students to get more involved in Gainesville on the east side. Like, I'm preaching in the choir here. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. It, well, bro, it's, it's one thing when I say it, it's another thing when you say it. You know what I mean? Right. So it's cool, right. man. So we have to do more uh, to get involved in the community. Uh, I mean, I, I just volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club nice. uh, with my fraternity. But That's what's up, there's man. always more that we can that can be done. Cool. cool. Uh, as alongside each other, just building the kind of tradition of working alongside each other and not seeing ourselves as two separate entities, but really right. just the same black people who just reside in two different locations. Um, now, obviously, that comes with different you know narratives, but... Uh, first, use the hashtag Black at UF or Black in Gainesville right. um, because there's, I mean, you can talk about it if you wanted to. We could have a whole a whole segment yeah, on uh, gentrification, how university um, perpetuated gentrification in Gainesville. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you see, you see the title laughing right now because no, it's true. It is true. Um, you could have a, and, and it's like how that has that affected Black people uh, genera- uh, generationally in Gainesville. Um, so get back to working alongside each other. Right. Um, Follow me on social media, not just me, but no. uh, student activists who need the support of um, every, just like, just man Yeah, I mean, and, and, and feel uh, free to shout out your social I media. I mean, my social media so people, is, you know. uh, is, is what, Oliver Toulouse. So nice. my first name, last name, very simple. But I'm not, I'm not the end all be all because racism just hasn't happened only to me. Right. Um, but just get involved and start cry, trying to create those bridges. Um, because there's going to come a time where people in Gainesville need student support. Absolutely. Um, 
out for us to come out, we have to be able to show up in numbers, and vice versa. We're gonna need the community to support along. So there's not 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 anything that you could really do like per se, like right now, like go do this at this this in time. Just talk about it. Talk yeah. about the, this instance of being manhandled on stage. Talk about East Gainesville. Talk about use a hashtag so we can stay connected on social media. Um, so we can at least know where and like who we need to target more and like how we need to be strategic about how to develop this. That's what's up, and, and, I, and I think that's brilliant. And I really think it's important to point out that, you know, as long as we, you know, perpetuate us thinking like uh, we're two different entities, mm -hmm. you know, rather than be the locals and the local community and, and the students on campus that come from these same local communities and other places, you right. know, um, it will be hard to progress, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, uh, locally. So I really think, uh, I really want to commend you for even recognizing that, man. You had something you wanted to express? I just wanted to ask, um, did your parents attend graduation? Oh yeah, so my parents came and then my little sister came. So what was their opinion of what happened on stage? They were shocked. They were, they were like, Oliver, what, what happened? That's what were amazing. you doing? And I, I, I literally showed them the move. They had never seen me stroll before. Um, they seen like a video of me stroll, right. but not that me do that particular move. Right. So um, I showed them, I demonstrated the move for them. Um, because they're Haitian also, like, you know, Greek culture isn't really a thing for Haitians. Uh, and, and they're just shocked. Like, why would, who who would allow him to, to kind of put his hands on you right. in that manner? And, so. um, a, a lot of the videos that you watch online, you can hear the crowd's reaction. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, like, for me, it was booze. I was in the audience by the time Nafisa got on stage, and when, when uh, the marshal put his hands on her, uh, I, was, I was I was booing until my voice got worse. Because hey, I mean, like like you said, if he's just half my size, right. I'm not like I like to punch team. him in the face. I just want to say that. Wow, man. I'm crazy. sorry. I know I, I'm not supposed to I'm, say that. I'm not but, a violent but I, person. But I, but, I, but I'd like to. I'm not a violent person. Right. Right. But we don't have a case violence here. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Jerk, jerk yeah, I'm show. not a violent person. All WNBT ninety point one FM. So, <laughs> but I I the the not uh, radio guy. I I'd like to punch him. <laughs> but I'm sorry, man. Could go right ahead, bro. But uh, it's, it's like Nafisa's half my size, yeah. and uh, to kind of you, you would feel like you would need to step behind her in order to to kind of make it uh, kind of to, to assert your 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 force in the same way. Right. Um, and there was a kid who did a literally did a backflip on stage and wasn't met with that same Sheesh, just yeah. sort of reaction. Yeah. I yeah. think it speaks uh, volumes. It does speak volumes. All right. Well, let me ask you about some other things that. You revealed to me through your video mm -hmm. that I had no idea that we were even occurring on campus. Um, and like we were saying earlier, we were discussing off air, I've, I've heard different stories um, from a number of different generations about this. But you mentioned um, that there was a sign ripped from, uh, you say, Walk, Walker Hall? Yeah, so to discourage black scholarships so explain that to the, me the line is they hate black scholarships so they tried to rip the sign from walker hall right and uh so walker hall for those excuse me i'm so sorry for those who may not be aware are is over. the uh center of uh african-american and jewish studies okay and uh it was just an incident where just one morning the sign was defaced and uh someone it appeared that someone had tried to pull the sign out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And which speaks to like two mar traditionally marginalized communities in different ways. Uh, but particularly for the black community that's had that long history of um, racism, uh, I think it was, it was incredibly unfortunate. Right, and one thing I wanted to ask about, ask you was about, we, we, we thoroughly covered the Richard Spencer um, mm -hmm event and the protest mm -hmm. and I guess I wanted to ask you um, just off your first hand experience what was the overall like mood not towards Richard Spencer obviously but um, the university and, and them spending because you mentioned that too about how they paid you know so much money for to protect uh, his visit here so what was the overall like um, I want to say mood but I guess response from from students, from so students it, was, it was kind of split. particularly so minority you, students you had students that wanted to protest so I mean students like, like Chad um, and, and others who went and protested, you know, I went and protested mm -hmm. um, and applied to other students that, you know, had to put, had to be put in a position where they could risk their physical safety to go protest someone who, in my opinion, shouldn't have been at this institution in the first well, place. Well, well, let me, let me point out too that, because um, you mentioned Chad, 
you're talking about the protests, um, the Richard Spencer protests, mm-hmm. but you guys, I don't say you guys, uh, but I know uh, Chad, they actually mm-hmm. protested school too. Right. Um, for their, um, and this is something I'm not asking you about this. Yeah. But but this is something that just popped in my head. Actually, they they actually protest the school for um, for having this guy. You know, before he even came. Mm-hmm. So I really think, and I just want to commend them. I guess for you know really. Um, I'm using Chad's name so much. I just want to shout him out. Yeah, so. shout out to Chad, so man. Chad, Chad the man. Uh, his, he put his me on that Kendrick of... Lamar, that high power too. Yeah, man. So, oh, he did. Yeah, he put me on that. So uh, shout out to so, Chad for that. Yeah, his man. handle is um, underscore Adonis Seven. So yeah, Chad. Yeah, no, uh, G, G, uh, Gene Defenders. Gene Defenders. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to him, uh, man. And shout out to uh, Courtney Ricketts too um, at uh, Ben Blacked Out nice. on Twitter too. Wow. Um, so yeah, so uh, obviously there's more than just Chad and, and right, 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 Courtney, right, right. But, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, so it was one side of students who wanted to go protest and felt like you know despite the risk of bodily safety, you right. should go out and protest. And there are people out there getting pepper sprayed, oh, yeah. um, uh, you know, physical altercations a couple yeah. after the fact. And it's just like, but it's like, we're protesting someone who we feel like shouldn't be here in the first place. Yeah. Shouldn't have the right to be here. There are other students who felt like, because of that risk of bodily safety, they shouldn't uh, go out and protest. Um, and that it'll kind of blow over. Which is, I mean, an out of, you know, Everyone has the agency to do whatever, um, but it kind of puts it puts st- students against each other. Like, oh, you're black, or you're not really black, or yeah. you're not really about the cause, or you're not going to go protest. And um, it's kind of it. It's it's just a byproduct of how yeah. how systems of power like to operate when yeah. you marginalize people, wow. and you pit kind of these communities that are already limited in terms of power and resources against each other. So if you can't, if they can't come together and coalesce, uh, it's hard to move forward. Right, right, right. Well, that was brilliantly put there, but <laughs> no, nah, it was. Um, you, you have anything you want to add real quick? Uh, no, nah, not, 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 not okay, sure. Okay, cool, I'll do that. I, wanna, I definitely want to, um, you know. All right, so this is another thing that I wanted to ask you, man, and this is a lot of, I guess at this point it's kind of like I'm beating a dead horse, but I just kind of want to get really get your personal perspective, man, because like I said, I've, I've never been a student at UF, but you mentioned in... Um, in the video as well, that um, you know, you, you mentioned some of the sports facilities and and the names that you know mm-hmm. that they came from, which I don't think that's a big secret around here. A lot of people uh, know that, and even you even mentioned the uh, Gator Bait Chomp, you know, too, yeah. and, and, and the history behind that. Can you kind of just give the backstories on not 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 really necessarily the backstories, but just again the what it's like to be under that right. shroud of you know and just right. racist figures everywhere like I, right. I, I just really want to you know, kind of pick your brain on that so uh, it's like the Wrights Union Stephen O'Connor Center uh, are the two like buildings I named I didn't know that about the Wrights Union mm-hmm. oh yeah mm-hmm. so <laughs> well, I didn't know that yeah um, so uh, both upheld kind of these these racist polity- right. policies non-progressive policies um, that kind of marginalized students of color and like, kind of played a role in kind of that division between um, Gainesville and University of Florida. Right. Uh, so, uh, what's it like? It's normalized. Like, uh, it's becoming increasingly normal. You know, you have, I, those are two buildings. I mean, I would surmise there might be more than two buildings uh, named after certain, yeah. uh, racist figures. There's a Freedom Wall. Um, well, definitely the football um, stadium, Ben Hill Group. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, at UF, that, t- that kind of like celebrates or uh, like um, different, you know, Questionably, uh, uh, I think Southern leaders. Right. Um, so uh, it's just normal at UF, and you you see how kind of like the culture is embedded, and it's like you all got to pay tuition, we all got to go there, we all got to yeah. try to get. We came here for a degree, so it's like, but by virtue of having to fall into that, you're upholding an institution that names these buildings or has these buildings named after these people. You said that in the video and I'm so glad that you pointed that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 I really did. Because it, the, the, the solution isn't as simple as like as far as that, that regard because I have to pay tuition. I have to pay right. student acti- activity and service fees, the ANS fees. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a result of me having to do that, I have, yeah. I play a role in upholding that system, I agree. I agree, and I, I mean, and, and no, and no fault of your own, I'd say, but it's just um, 
the, the fact that we can recognize it, that's the first step in changing it. Mm -hmm. So I really think, that's why I say it's, it's so awesome that you even point that out. I mean, because it kind of, um, it, it kind of reveals our own power, you right. know what I mean, and what we can really do about it. Um, yo, we've been riding out for almost an hour, man, believe it or oh, not, wow. fellas. Um, um, is there anything we should, you, you want to touch on before we get up out of here, Disciple? I, I kind of want to, I want to, um, I want to tell Oliver, man, congratulations for graduating. Mm -hmm. But as a future lawyer, nice. are there any um, future considerations that you have toward maybe trying to help right the wrongs at the University of Florida um, or the United States of America in general? I mean, is that, is that an area of law that you would be interested in? Because it, 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 there's a lot of um, wrongs being done in America right now. You know, there's, uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, I guess the smartphone changed the world because now we're recording it and we have social media where we can find about find out about it instantly. Mm -hmm. So what are your plans? Do you plan that? I mean, you as a lawyer, you'll definitely be a person that could affect change. You know, it takes numbers, but legal legally changing things is a lot better than just protesting. Yeah. So, uh, well, do you have an hour for me to explain? <laughs> uh, Feel free, you're good, but, bro. But I think, I mean, for me, that's that's kind of what my passions are, and nice. I mean, my first, I feel like my first gift was the ability to write. Okay. Um, so, like, that's what I've been channeling all my energies to, and then, um, you know, hopefully matriculating into law school, uh, be able to do that just in a legal setting. Um, so that's that's a part of the plan. That's a part of the goal. Um, but also not to forget, you know. Not everyone is going to be a lawyer. Um, not everyone's going to... Some people might just, you know... I think the ability to transcend and, and work in different communities, I think, is incredibly important. So not just... In my, I hope my, my own impact isn't as a lawyer. I hope it's still as you know, being able to be a, a, a speaker or a writer or nice. an activist. And I think, I think I'm not so caught up and consumed in, oh, I have to be a lawyer in order to enact this change because... I was doing this since what I, I got into college. Oh, so yeah. I did it awesome. without a degree. Oh, nice. So having that degree is just like, okay, how can I use that tool in order to further awesome. the, the that's, liberation? That's the that's what a community organizer does. That's what an organizer does. They they take every level of the community, you know, from the lawyers down to the winos and they yeah. they, they give them something to do towards mm -hmm. the, the greater good. Mm -hmm. And I really think um, I really think you're gonna be very instrumental in uh, progression, brother. Uh, uh, just to kind of piggyback off the disciple here, you got me kind of curious. Uh, is that something you're going into, civil rights, uh, uh, justice, re uh, criminal justice reform, something like that? Yeah, so, um, I mean, like, right now I work in, in research at the Samuel Parker Oil History Program. Okay, nice. Um, I'm, I'm the coordinator for the Latino Diaspora of the Americas Project, but um, I've also done work for the Mississippi Freedom Project, which is, like, every wow. summer we go to uh, Mississippi Delta and document you know, civil rights history there. So, like, last summer, uh, we went and saw where Emmett Till was killed. Wow. Uh, we did uh, a day of service, uh, cleaning up Black Cemetery. We did over 50 interviews, ranging from elected officials. We interviewed the state senator. Uh, awesome. We interviewed, like, the first nurse practitioner in the state of Mississippi. who's was a black woman who happens to be an AKA. Shout out to First Fam. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so, like, we... Like, this work has been something that's been, like, integral to my collegiate experience. Like, I cannot define my collegiate experience without that. And I'm just going to continue that. That's what's up, And man. starting to work. Well, bro, man, again, man, congratulations. And thank we you. commend you, bro. Like, I really, really want to thank you for coming by. Thank you for having me. Um, I really want to thank my esteemed co-host today. Uh, <laughs> the Disciple in the building. Y'all make sure y'all check him out at 4 o'clock. It was uh, 2 or 4. 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock, 4 to 6, man. Him and uh, Miss. First Almost lady. first lady, cool. I ain't want to violate again. All right, the disciple and the first lady, four o'clock on Sunday. Make sure y'all are tuned in, man. It's your boy Jake Jenkins right here on WBT 9.1 FM. The beat. We got Mr. Oliver Toulouse in the building, y'all. Don't go nowhere, man. Keep it locked right here. WBT 9.1 FM. The beat. All right, bro. All right. Hey, man. I appreciate you, bro, for Thank real, you. man. Thank you for bro. having me. Nah, absolutely. That was deep.